Hello everybody, this is Simon with the 4 now final episode of Mega Man Dogs for Dactylon's Hard Games Thread. It's time to take him on. The leader. The brightest mind of his generation. Man, that's taking a long time to scroll, hopefully he won't be too late. Whoops. Hey, extra life, nice. That reminds me of something. A little something called I wanna be the guy. Ha! Knew it. Hmm. Maybe the new weapon will help. This is actually the very first time I tried it out. You know what? It almost worked. <laughs> this has the potential to be kind of game breaking but also really interesting. I haven't really toyed around with it all that much because this is so far still the only time I've used it. But generally, yeah, definitely worth worth trying out a little more. I don't really know what happened with the video there and I apologize. But I do not like the dogs in general. It's just, um, there is so much stuff coming at you from all over the place. I guess it's still fair in a sense, but it's just not pandering to any skills that I personally have. Um, so fortunately enough, I do have a lot of special weapons at my disposal. And as this is the final stage, I'm going to abuse the fuck out of them. Don't charge me. So just to show off what the right one does when he charges up. And as the Ice Spears are very, very strong to the left, spamming them means goodbye. The best tactic I've found so far. I haven't really shown that off, but if you kill the Batontons and do not throw them away, they will explode in all directions. Will the Power Glove help me push the button? Sadly enough, no. It is too bad for that. Also sadly enough, cannot pick up the dragonflies. Oh well. Fortunately we've got an AOE weapon to take care of those. Have to release the button to make them explode, Simon. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. And now I'm at half health for a mini boss. Show yourself. Don't think I haven't seen you there. This guy is pretty basic. Of course you have to take up all the three spheres so it will still take a while. They are not exactly made of paper. So. The biggest problem is immediately when you kill the first one, it will split and then you have a lot of things to worry about at once. After it happened, well, the red face is kind of boring and just tedious. I did get hit there, yes, I know. But uh, generally, I think it takes a little too long. So let's just do this quickly and efficiently and... Oh, oops. Dekti has already said that you can slide cancel out of that, but I so far haven't been able to pull it off. So yeah, I'm getting kind of tired of this mini boss already, so come here and go away. What I didn't realize at the time was that it would cancel out all of the extra stuff. The bullets spawning and also the fireballs, which makes the final phase uh, kind of simple. Because normally there would be two fireballs running around the edges going uh, in opposite directions and as it is you don't have anything to do while you wait for it to come down to uh, be able to hit it again. So I just decided to cut that one short too. I apologize if I didn't give this fight justice but overall I do think it is kind of too tedious for its own good. Especially as you have to take up the easier phases at the start and then the last one is definitely the most difficult. Yes. But it's just taking a bit too long. Oh man, we have to have an elevator ride in a Mega Man game after all. With the smartest of the bunch. Whoops. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Well that was kind of silly. Off to the level proper. And it's still a pretty long level. I don't know if they should be changed. I just think overall it drags on a little too much at the start and then it really gets started in Elegman Sage for some reason and overall it just takes takes quite a while to pick up steam and takes quite a while to get through. Don't know. Ah, this puzzle. It stumped a lot of players the first time they saw it and me too because it's really not that intuitive. Fortunately enough it has already been changed as Robot Goat has told me. I haven't tried out the new version. This one here works like so. You have to wait at the full flash on the green block and then you can move on and will periodically start flashing again. 
it's, as I said, not that intuitive and it separates the bright men from the normal people. Hello up there, by the way. This is kind of annoying and breaks the flow a little, but I don't know if I would change it. Actually, so far, I have at this point in the video, I haven't figured out that they only trigger when you pass under them, which is going to cost me dearly in a few seconds. Here, for example. And as you can probably imagine, with this guy, too. Oh well. Uh, generally, it is pretty uh, easily doable. And Hello, Brightman. I don't think you, caught, uh, you thought this kind of plan all the way through. It is pretty doable and not that annoying as it's just stopping you for one or two seconds at most. So, whatever. Just kill himself. This is uh, now a harder iteration of the block puzzle. <laughs> not a block puzzle, but a puzzle with blocks we've already seen. As can be seen here, you have to be pretty quickly. Uh, pretty quick, sorry. Um, and here. It costs me dearly my life that I do not realize that I get frozen in, in the spot. But two problems with that. First of all, um, the dragonflies are random, so um, it wasn't guaranteed that this guy would come there. And um, the spikes should really be substantial. I should have been able to save myself and not fall through them. Here you do not have to take the bottom path. If you're quick, the top path will suffice. In fact, the very first time I did it, it did. This guy has a very nice placement, mm, he attempt, nice. Um, in that if you are not careful he will knock you off the ledge, but by now you should be really familiar with how they work, so it's not a problem at all. Yeah, this one was also out for my blood. Hey Brightman. Again, I don't think this was exactly what you planned. Thanks for the E-Tank, idiot. As I said in speedrun main stage, the springs uh, are really fun and I like that they are coming back here, I almost forgot that. Another one of those, of little to no consequence. You really shouldn't fuck this one up. And another gimmick. Because... Brightman isn't done with us yet. Oh hey! The very first time I played this I brightmaned and didn't realize exactly that the sparklies were what caused the trigger. In retrospect, it is kind of obvious. And it fits nicely with the theme of the boss and the level in that he constantly harasses you, which makes the beginning section stick out even more. I don't know. As I said, I'm just not too fond of long levels in general, especially in a game as hard as this. We really thought the guy would jump to the left, uh, to the right. And, um, because a little fuck up here, a little fuck up there, and then you have to do a whole lot of things over again. It's not too big of a problem with infinite lives, of course, but as it stands, it is just a little too uneven. For example, Punch Donkey is a really standard length level. Um, it could be in normal Capcom Mega Man game. And this one here is just like twice as long, easily. That's just a little more polish needed, in my opinion, but as this is just an alpha and still very very good already. Not a big problem at all. These rooms are pretty self-explanatory. You have to watch out for where the sparklies are to find the right route. And this can be kind of annoying here, especially if you rush. But it's not really a problem because you are up here again in a second. Uh, just went a little too far to the right here. But you're just up here in a second so it doesn't get annoying or tedious or anything. Um, it really shouldn't be too much of an obstacle, too much annoyance, even with the waiting around it sometimes forces you to do. Um, it's all in line. That's a fun little boss here. Well, this guy back for revenge for me having thrown away him and all his brothers. <laughs> I really didn't expect him to bounce off the red ones there. Too bad that I respawn all the way over here. This is the point where I'm getting kind of tired of the stage. I apologize for that because I'm getting sloppy and stuff like this happens. Fortunately, as I've said, the block puzzles have already been changed to not require waiting around so long in order for it to be safe. I ponder here if I should cut it short. In the end, I do it because, as I said, I'm getting kind of tired of the stage. Sorry about that, really, because it is not too bad of a fight, but it is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it is not too hard, it's perfectly in line. The flashing um, telegraphs the problems way in advance. 
It's all fine, I just didn't feel like it. Whoa! Going all Majora's Mask on our ass. Fortunately enough, I have this little instinct... <laughs> fish cut out. I have this little instinct of always going away as far as possible from the boss to see what he does, so this never hit me, not even the first time around. Generally, Brightman suffers a little from the problem of being very, very predictable. He always does the same moves over and over again in the same, um, in the same pattern, and especially the fish move means that you can real easily get hits in and he is very unlikely to hit you. I mean, it's of course because he is really stupid, the entire stage has already played that one out, um, but it makes for a really, really simple fight in my opinion. Oh, that shouldn't have happened. This phase is actually really cool and reminds me favorably of um, Phantom of Zero One's fame, but it is also over really quickly because Brightman is just kind of bad at what he does. Overall, could stand to be a little harder and what is that? Holy shit, can't wait to try out that! But not this time, for the game is sadly over. So far, a very, very good game. And I congratulate Robot Goat and Dactylon for having made such a great game. It needs a little polish here and there, but I'm very happy to have done this so far. Thank you very much for your attention.